most uplifting one uh, for most of us. Uh, in fact, uh, I think there's great reason for great concern. Um, but I'm very happy that uh, our discussion this afternoon, uh, in the presence of Carl Gilt, and I'm very grateful that you're here, uh, on the report of the Global Commission on Internet Governance, One Internet, uh, actually gives us uh, some reason to be optimistic, to look at the great benefits and opportunities of the open internet and the major leadership and governance questions that are before us. Uh, Frau Bildt um, had the um, idea and the vision to bring together 29 independent experts or very different experts uh, from the world of government, from the world of technology and internet governance itself, uh, from the world of diplomacy, academia, journalism, uh, and activism, uh, and I was lucky to serve on the Global Commission, or the Guild Commission, as it became called, uh, in a more public uh, uh, way, popular way. Uh, we had several meetings over a period of two years where we frankly crunched our brains uh, and had very uh, intensive discussions about what the major uh, questions and priorities should be uh, in, in the fields of uh, internet governance, but also related to the role of states, uh, the role of private actors, civil society, and uh, the technical community in order to keep the internet open. Uh, as the title reveals, one internet is our goal, uh, and there are several very concrete recommendations in the report, which if you don't have it yet, is on the table right there, but you can also find it online. Um, and uh, uh, we really hope that you will have a look and spread the word. And um, uh, Carl will now share the main findings, uh, and then we'll have plenty of time for a more lively discussion uh, where you can also participate. So we look forward to that. Carl, thanks again for being here and for sharing your main takeaways from, from our work. Thanks, Maritia, and thanks for being both uh, a member of the Commission for the last two years and then uh, hosting uh, this. Uh, I think we can say first of all that we're going to have in Brussels centered on these particular issues. As said, this was uh, started uh, more than two years ago, when, uh, well, significantly more than two years ago, as a matter of fact. I mean, the first meeting of the Commission was in the late spring or early summer, I think, two years ago yeah. in Stockholm. But discussions really started far earlier, as a matter of fact. It started in uh, half a year early in Seoul, in Korea on the margins of the uh, global cyber conference that was held by the Korean government at that particular time. It was an initiative undertaken by two think tanks, Shadow House in London and CG, uh, the Centre for Global Governance Innovation, I think it's called, in Ottawa in Canada, uh, to set this up and bring together 29 personalities. And if you look at the list, you will see that they are, to put it mildly, a rather diverse bunch of people with extremely different backgrounds. And some people, when they saw the list, say this is never going to work because they are coming from far too different points of view concerning this. We've met uh, 10 times uh, all over the world. Correct me, my chair, when I'm wrong. Stockholm, uh, London, Hague, uh, Ottawa, Seoul, Amman, um, Accra, Palm Springs, um, I might have forgot some exclusive destination that we managed to have our meetings in. That is for the Commission as such. Then it should be noted that there's been set up, so to also come something called the Research Advisory Network. And that, you can find it on the website. They have published in the order of 50 different papers that we have uh, commissioned. And this is probably as a totality, the biggest single collection of research material on internet related issues that you can find in one place anywhere in the world. Uh, those are of course papers that comes under the names of the different experts that we have commissioned. And some of them we have listened to directly in commission, some of them will be just read, and some of them are just independent papers that have been an input both to us and to the wider debate. And there are some that are truly groundbreaking and truly interesting, if I might say so. I can point particularly perhaps to paper on surveillance issue, which I think is the most extensive exposition of those issues published, publicly published anywhere. And uh, also some material of what we call the dark web, 
which I also think is uh, something that we will find elsewhere. Some of the blockchain thing is also fairly groundbreaking. Um, what we say in the report is, of course, that fairly obviously, that uh, issues related to the internet are among the most pressing of public policy issues that we have today. Because the importance of the net is growing so far. Um, it's very popular, in the, particularly in the German debate, to talk about sort of Internet 4.0 and the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, I normally talk about something that is much wider, and that is that we are in the beginning of the transition from the industrial to the digital age. The fourth phase of the industrial revolution might be the final one, but it might also be the first phase of the truly digital age. We've seen the internet very quickly become the most important infrastructure of the world, and it's soon going to be the infrastructure of all other infrastructures as well. The internet of things, or the internet of everything, or however you care to, to, to describe that. We stress very clearly in the report the importance of an open, free, secure internet. Um, and the open, free, secure, all of those words are important, but all of those uh, are under threat, the one way or the other. And accordingly, if you look at the report, or particularly the essentials, which we might call the summary, you find a couple of different scenarios where things might be heading. And uh, some of these scenarios are very good, without much of a problem. Some of them are extremely problematic, including when sort of lack of trust uh, leads to a breakdown of uh, the open and free nature of the net, with the restrictions inside countries, restrictions between countries, and restrictions between continents. And that would fracture the net in a way that would substantially reduce the economic and social benefits that we might, all of us might derive from the development of the net. We have three different scenarios that we consider not inconceivable, and we underline that this requires public policy action, uh, and by public policy action means policy action by the multi-stakeholder community. It is governments needed to say, but it's also others, private sectors and individuals, in order to be able to avert the dangers that are there. We can say that the trust issues that are fairly serious relate to two different uh, two different broadly defined areas. Uh, the privacy protection areas, um, and we, when our, we had a meeting in The Hague, whatever that could have been, a year ago or something like that, um, where we should uh, call for what we call the social compact on the surveillance issues. And I think it can be said that that particular document that we issued at that time, which is also to be found, in the report, again, has had an impact upon the public policy debate in X numbers of different countries. And we now see significant movement in different countries along the lines of what we proposed at that particular time. It also applies to the private sector, uh, because the private sector collects as much or more information about individuals as governments do. There's, of course, the difference that governments can do evil things to people. Um, there are less things that business can do, but anyhow, the privacy concern is there as well, and we call for sort of new debate on what that should lead to in, in, in different respects. One um, aspect of the debate that's been very sort of complicated, still is very complicated, is of course the entire uh, problem of encryption and backdoors and access to that in different ways. And um, after substantial debate and taking into account all the expertise that are in the Commission, we come down firm, firmly in favour of encryption is there and backdoors and other hidden things is going to be detrimental long term. Security services do have a responsibility to safeguard the safety uh, of citizens and they do have an interest in surveillance and things like that. There are other ways in which they must fulfil the duties that they have to protect society and protect individuals but to tamper with encryption is not something that people could recommend. Here, of course, there is a major debate raging in the United States, as you've noticed, where the US government has not yet come down. But I think that, uh, I, I, I would suspect that the US government, after some significant turmoil, 
is to going to come down at something that is closer to what the Commission recommends than most people would think. Um, and in Europe, I don't think this issue has been sorted out. I understand the Dutch government is in agreement with the Commission for some reason. Uh, those things happen. Um, and, and apparently some other governments. The Swedish government, I don't think, has a specific point on that uh, either um, um, as of yet. But this is among the major public policy issues that we have addressed. Then, of course, all of the issues related to the security and the stability, the need for sort of a digital hygiene on the net, but also um, more cooperation to address the serious threats that are there uh, in terms of the security. One particular aspect of that is the fact that we have state actors uh, on the net that are doing things that are not necessarily in conformity with what we would like, and we call for an extended global dialogue or norms for state behavior on the net. The UN uh, government, group of governmental experts have already twice been pronouncing themselves on this. There's a third round of those consultations that are being prepared. And there's also, uh, back to the Dutch government, back to the Dutch again, ha -ha, um, uh, an initiative by the Dutch government to perhaps move these things forward. But as we have noticed, every conflict in the world today as a cyber dimension. Part of that by individuals, part of that by hackers, part of that by groups, but a significant part is also by government actors that have propaganda aspects of it, but also disruptive attacks, and could also tamper with the integrity of data, which is uh, an enormously serious issue, and also tamper with the basic infrastructure, or the basic structure of the net, which is an even more serious concern that we take up. I think I'm going to stop there, uh, because there are endless numbers of other issues, uh, legal cooperation between nations when it comes to dealing with cybercrime. We have made some progress inside Europe with Europol, but of course the mechanisms that are there between states at the moment have been set up to deal with the odd, the odd individual case now and then. And now we face the need to uh, deal with enormous numbers of cases all the time. <laughs> that would require quite substantial changes in the international structure for um, legal assistance in those particular cases. So, um, I can only recommend reading the report. Um, the report doesn't answer all questions. Uh, it raises some questions that do not yet have an answer. Uh, the report has now been delivered, but we will continue the discussions and the outreach, and uh, particularly in uh, other parts of the world. Uh, we have a number of events that are now being scheduled in India and in Africa, in the US, uh, eventually here in Brussels again, uh, in Korea, in order to continue the debate during the next year at least, in order to be able to influence public policy, listen to the reflections that are there. The formal presentation was done last week when there was a special uh, ministerial meeting of the OECD, 34 nations of the world, in Cancun and Mexico. And I have to say I was surprised by the uh, positive and extensive uh, reception that uh, we got. We were supposed to deliver it to the Secretary General of the United Nations uh, last, uh, well, whatever it was, last week anyhow. That did not occur because he had to go off to Colombia because of the Col Colombia peace deal which I think was the right priorities by Bank Moon in this particular case. Uh, but of course there will be some event related to this also on the, on the United Nations. That finishes, yeah, more or less. <laughs> more or less, from the done in these days. <laughs> this is me. Yeah, okay, thanks. Sorry for a bit of the confusion, but hopefully you know who we are. If not, feel free to ask. <clears throat> no, I mean, I don't have that much to add to uh, uh, what Carl said, but just wanted to reflect a little bit on uh, the process, which indeed, uh, 29 very different people, some with hardcore security backgrounds, some working on development uh, and in civil society, was a bit of a challenge. I mean, uh, I can be honest and tell you that I got a lot of very, very critical questions uh, at the start of, of the Commission's work, uh, people even asking me why I would participate uh, in this initiative. But I thought it would be 
uh, worthwhile at least to see what it could lead to. Uh, and uh, I think it is quite remarkable if we just reflect a little bit on what has happened in the world uh, since we started this process and then look at the result of the report, which I do believe uh, gives a, a, a clear impression of how the thinking about some of these very complex issues is shifting uh, at the speed of light, pretty much at the same uh, pace that technologies are developing which of course was a challenge to work while the world progresses. So just, I mean, in the beginning of our work, we were talking a lot about the impact of the uh, Snowden revelations, of course, which were very much framing the debate, but since then there have been new sort of watershed moments, such as the challenge between Apple and the FBI, but also the hack of the Office of Personnel Management and Sony, the attack on the Ukrainian power grid, uh, the uh, uh, stealing or fraud with the uh, Bangladeshi bank, which involved uh, digital uh, components, but also the adoption of net neutrality laws uh, in both the EU and the US. And this is only a very, very small selection of issues, but uh, it also reflected <coughs> the events as they went on and as our discussions took shape. Um, I think what was really nice to see was the intense um, effort that all of the members of the Commission made to come to a consensus uh, and to come to a report that all our names are under, which it's a bit longer uh, than uh, I had hoped, but it, it's only because there is so much uh, to be said. And the fact that we all came together around this uh, is reason for optimism, if you ask me. Um, we have very much sought not only to address some of the current questions, but to look to the future. How are we going to deal with questions around bringing the 4 billion people online that are not yet online? And what could a digital divide lead to? How do you make sure that people can participate and that this is an inclusive question? Uh, but also, how do we ensure that there is going to be an effort to actually roll out access to the open internet, all of the internet for all of the people all of the time? And not to see uh, you know, narrow intranets uh, through zero rating or uh, free basics as you've seen uh, unfolding uh, limits.